Welcome to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson, and this is our third series. We're going to be working on our pie basket today, but before we get into that basket, I'd like to go back and just review some of the materials that we'll be using. Your material is purchased by the pound. It comes in either a coil or it'll come in a hank. I kind of prefer the coils because I think you get a better quality read that way. This is the flat, sometimes called flat flat, and it also comes rounds, and it also comes flat oval, flat on one side, oval on the other. There's half rounds, there's also oval overs, a lot of different materials out there. We're going to be working with a lot of naturals during this series, and I'm really excited about that. Some of the naturals we'll be bringing in are palm seeds, grape vines, honeysuckle, philodendron leaves, Tropical vines, I have a beautiful tropical vine we'll be using. Maybe some corn husk, a lot of different things. I'd like to show you how to cut apart one of these so that you'll know because it's kind of, well, it's not really tricky, but once you get into it, we're going to just cut off these strings here. Sometimes they're strings and sometimes they're pieces of reed. Come in here and cut this off here. There's lots of other little pieces here that we need to remove all these. I generally leave on the top one up here because that kind of just holds everything together. I'm going to snip all these off. And then you're going to it, pull from this end and pull one out and work it out. If you have somebody that you can help work with you on this, you can take a hold of one end and pull from the opposite end. It makes it a lot easier rid of these. Um, some of the handles we'll be working with are a swing handle. This has some wooden knobs on it. Very pretty. This is a beautiful new Victorian handle. We'll be doing a basket with that one. There's also our D handle and another type of swing with some ears on it. The tools, let's go over those real quick, what we'll be using for our tools. These are basket cut shears, um, not necessary, something maybe you'll want to invest in later because they are really wonderful, but just your common everyday household shears will work or scissors. You're going to need needle nose pliers, a knitting needle, pencil, a flat head screwdriver works. This is a weaving tool, it's very nice because it has rounded edges, but something you can get later. A paring knife, of course you're going to need a bucket, a large bucket to put your water in and a towel to work with a tape measure, the sewing type, lots of your spring type clothespins, and something for a spoke weight. And remember the librarian that got after me for using a library book, so, you know, try to find something. This is a spoke weight and it works very nice. Getting into our pie basket now, the cut material and the pattern that you'll need for this, you need three quarter inch flat. You'll need to cut eight pieces that are 28 inches long. You need three quarter inch flat, we'll be using those for your weavers. Number three round reed, you'll need five eighths inch flat for weavers also. Five eighths inch flat oval, you'll need four to five millimeter of cane, some number five seagrass, a one twenty inch notched handle. Remember the notches are down here and you're going to measure it this way. Now we're going to get started on laying out our pie basket. I've already cut my spokes. Remember that reed has a right side and a wrong side. The wrong side, if you bend it over, you'll hit, see these little hairs coming up. And the smooth side is the right side. I'm going to lay these out. I, first of all, I should show you how to mark it. You're going to line up your two ends down here. Take your pencil and put a pencil line on here and use pencil, never use an ink pen because pencil can be erased or it will eventually wear off. I'm going to first lay out four spokes. I want to move the basket and have a little more room here. And I've already marked my centers on the wrong side. I'm lining up my centers here. I'm going to come in and get some number three round. I've chosen number three round for this because it's a little sturdier than the number two, which you'll find I use a lot of number two. But today we're using number three. I have two different in lengths down here, and I'm going to put a crimp on here, and what that, that does is kind of smash down those fibers so it'll bend without breaking. Up here, I have laid my first spoke vertically this way, and I'm going to put up here SS, and that's just a cue me to let me know that's my starting spoke. I'm going to loop over that, put my crimp down here. 
you don't have to be real close to the center here. Taking the, the weaver on the left, now this is for right-handed weavers, take the weaver on the left, bring it underneath the spoke on the right. Then that one will make, that will make this one now on the left, so I'm going to take that one around. Always picking up the twining or the piece of weaver on your left. Now, once I get this a little bit going, I can spin it. I like to keep my work at the top so I can see what I'm doing. This does not have to fit in tight, but I need to have a nice round circle up here, so that's what I'm after. So as I fit these in, And I've, when I get back up here to my starting spoke, which is right here, I'm going to come back and adjust this and make sure I have a nice round circle. It's important to start with a nice, a nice beginning here, nice and smooth and round. Then continue on. Remember, I'm taking the weaver, the piece of twining on the left, and it goes around the next spoke. I'm going to do this for four rows. I'm going to twine about four rows, and then I'm going to be able to fit in my next four weave, my next four spokes. Let me show you how to add a piece here. I have run out of this piece here. I always want to end my short piece on the left side. Take out another piece of number three round. I have all my material soaking. You can soak this for quite some time. I wouldn't suggest soaking it all night, though, because it will have a tendency to turn gray. Lifting up this piece here, when I lift this one up, it creates a hole in here. Slide that new piece in and keep right on going. If this piece is kind of long and getting in your way, just come in here and snip it out. I, don't, I still snip it long so that I can go back later and do my trim work later. Continue on weaving for a total of eight rows. I'm going to go to the next set over here. And I've already done the eight rows. And what I'm going to do now, I already have these marked in the center with a pencil. Starting, here's my starting spoke, and I've already woven on that one. So I'm going to add the next spoke right next to it, lining up my centers in here, having the tail come out the opposite side. By doing those first eight rows, that allows me the room in here to insert my next spokes. I'm going to add the next one. I have four more, a total of four. I have two more after this one to add. A total of four. And we'll put this one here. I don't need this close pin. We'll move him. So I'm twining in my new one, my new spoke, and I'm twining in the old one, the one that I started with. It's already there. Now, as I, now that I have my four added, and as I continue around, I'm picking up the tails of my new spokes. And again, this is just a basic twine that I'm doing. The left one is always the one that goes under the next spoke. Line, line up your tails over here, the opposite end of your spoke. Here I'm running out again, and I'll show you real quick how to add a new spoke again one more time. Take out another piece of number three round that you've had soaking. Oops, a little water in the eye there. And insert the new one. Lift up the old piece here, the piece that ran out. Remember, it has to be on the left side. Stick in the new one and continue on. Leave a little bit of length on them. Push them in there about an inch at least so that you have room to go back and trim. Continue twining and packing these rows in. It's too hard to go back later and pack them all in, so pack them in good and tight right now as you're weaving along. You're going to weave for a total of 11 inches in diameter, 11 inches across, so it'll be five and a half inches on each side of your center mark. And this is, even though we're calling this a 10-inch pie basket, it really has an 11-inch base so that you can get your fingers around that pie plate and get it out. Okay? Continue on this way till you have 11 inches. And I've already done that to save a lot of time. And here I am, up here. I'm going to end, here's my starting spoke. Remember, I marked it with a pencil, an SS up here. And I'm going to end these. I'm going to cut this off so I don't have so much length to worry about. Now, I'm going to use my knitting needle. It's a nifty little tool. 
The one on the left is coming across here, the one before our starting spoke, and I'm going to insert my knitting needle down in there. I'm using my needle nose, nose pliers. Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to put a crimp on here again so it won't break. Now I don't need all this length, so I'm going to come in here and cut a little bit of this length out. And because I put the crimp on there, it's bending real easy for me, and I'm just going to insert it down in there. Same thing over here. My my weaver here is coming underneath the spoke I just did, coming back to my starting spoke. About in the center, I'm going to put a crimp, give it a bend, stick in my knitting needle, and push that down in there. Now I've got some gap here, so I really need to push that in a little bit more, a little bit farther, because I don't want this to gap up here. There. Now we're going to upset our basket. Make sure it's nice and wet at this point. To upset, remember, we're just putting a bend on it. Don't be afraid. It's not going to break. It may crack, but that's just the way reed is. I'm going to upset them all. There we go. Now, taking out some 3 quarter inch flat, because that's the reed we're using, and I have mine soaking. Remember to watch your right and wrong side. Make sure your smooth side is out. And I'm going to pick it up this way because it's easier for me to work. And I'm going to, I kind of sneak back. You always want to start on top. Make sure you are on top of a spoke. Then you're going to weave this around. Now I use lots of clothespins when I work. It just helps shape it because right now at this point there is nothing to hold this basket together for me. So I need lots of clothespins while I do the first two or three rows. When I get back to where I started, I'm going to overlap four. Here's where I began. This is going to be my first spoke, one, two, three, and four. So before I weave that in, it's a whole lot easier to come in here and snip this off. And I want to show you this up close, too. I cut it the longest possible length without it showing when I hide it. And I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to weave this underneath, right on top of what I just wove. And that hides my end coming this way. And this spoke will hide my end over here. So I don't have any end showing. I began my weaving here. Turn your basket, go to the opposite side. And you're going to put in your second row. Again, always start on top. That's very important. Remove your clothespins when you come around them. Pack this in tight as you're working. It's too hard to go back later. I can't stress that enough, how hard it is to go back later and try to pack it down. It can be done, but it's difficult. So if we pack it all in tight as we're weaving, you'll have a nice looking basket when you get done. I'm back to, almost back to where I began. Here we go. Remember, I'm going to overlap four. Here's my one I started on. I'm going to come over here. I can weave this right in. This is three, and this is four, and I'm going to cut it right there and tuck it under. I'm going to hold it with a clothespin. Okay? Now, I, what I did next was put in three rows of twining. And this is um, real easy to do also. Again, I'm going to start with a crimp, two different end lengths down here and a crimp. I can start anywhere. I like to start kind of opposite of where I did my last row. I began my last row over here, so I'm going to start over here. I want to loop it over a spoke that is woven under. And this is, here's my weaver. My spoke is my up right here. So I'm going to be on one that's woven under. Taking the one from the left, I'm going to always go behind my next spoke. Here's my weaver on the left, behind the next spoke. As I come to my close pins, I can take them off. One nice thing about the twining is that it kind of helps hold everything together. I put this in not for that purpose on this basket, but I put it in for the beauty of it to add this and kind of break up the pattern here. But it does really help hold things together. I'm going to do a total of three rows. Now I'm coming in here and I have my 5 eighths inch and I have to do a row of 5 eighths. This row is going to be hidden underneath 
the rim. And I just check in here to make sure I have my right side out. Please check every piece that you do. That's important. You don't want, <coughs> pardon me, you don't want the hairy, the hairy sides out. Okay. And I'm almost back. See how quickly these sides go up when you use the flat reed? If I was twining this basket would take a long time to do. But it's real quick and easy with the, with the flat reed. Now that I have my basket done um, on the bottom part, now we're not finished yet, but I have it done on the bottom part. Now we're going to do what we call cut and tuck. This is my 5 8 inch row here. If the weaver comes in front of a spoke, and this is your spoke, it's going to be cut off. If the weaver goes behind a spoke, that spoke is going to be bent and tucked down in there. I'm going to cut a few of these off. The pattern works out to be every other one. Make sure you're cutting off the right ones. And after you get these cut off, then you're going to come in here and we're going to tuck. And this is wet, so it's going to bend pretty easy. I'd like to tuck this down at least into this third row here. So I'm going to cut off the excess. Sometimes I'll put a little point on it just because it travels down in there so much easier. Using my screwdriver, my flat head, I'm simply going to take and tuck that under there and that end is going to be hidden. Try to keep your basket as neat as possible and hide the ends whenever you can. Now there are probably some occasions you won't be able to, but as a rule, try to hide all those ends. That's what you're going to finish. This is called cut and tuck and you're going to finish up the top of the basket. Now I've already done that on my next one. This one has all my rows in. It's been all cut and tucked, and now we're going to add our rim. I'm using flat oval, 5 8 inch flat oval. I have a big piece soaking here. And the reason I chose this is because this is the largest flat oval comes, and it does give me a nice sturdy lid, or a top, a rim here. I'm going to come back about two and a half to three inches and I'm going to whittle this down because if I lay that on top of itself, it's just going to be too heavy. So I'll show you, I'm just whittling it down. The longer it soaks, the easier it's going to whittle for you. Let's do our outside rim first. I'm going to just lay that starting anywhere and clip it on and follow it around and put some clips on it to hold it in place some of our spring type clothespins. Now this is where I began my whittling over here, the longest part. I'm going to come over here and cut this off where I started the whittling. I'm going to need this piece, so I'll hang on to it for a minute. And I'm going to clamp that down there. I'm going to do the same thing on the inside. Remember the flat part has to fit against the basket. And again, I'm just, whoop, I'm going to just whittle some of this off about two and a half, three inches, because it's got to lay on top of itself. Coming on the opposite side, I'm going to just secure this on here with the same clothespins that I used the first time around. And again, I'm going to go to the longest point where I started whittling and clip it off there. That's just a little bit too long. Let's go in again. Okay. Now I have to insert my notched handle. I've already finished this handle, and we'll get into finishing handles in a later program, something that I know you'll be interested in. We're going to come in here. Here's where I started my ends, my two different inside and outside ends. And so I want to be opposite of those. I don't want too much work, too much going on where that happens. So I'm going to insert over here. What I've done is I've put the handle between the basket and the rim, the inside rim. I can skip over a first row, first uh, three rows of my weaving, come down into my, you can see that there, come down into my twining and come down here and hide that in. See how the end of that hides down in there? Coming to the opposite side and make sure you're directly opposite. Again, you're going to fit that between the basket and the inside rim. Pick up your twining, slide that down, and pick up that last row of weaving and slide it in there, and it's going to hide that. 
Now that notched handle, that notched part of the handle, is going to have the rim rest right on top of it. Can you see that in there? That's what holds that handle in. Make sure it does so on both sides. Number five seagrass is what we're going to use for a filler. And that's what I'm going to put across the top of this to hide all my work in between the rims. I'm going to be using five millimeter cane to lash the top of the basket with. Sometimes the lashing is called lacing also. I'm going to put a, a point on it here. It helps it travel through the basket easier. Coming in here, I'm going to open this area up. I have the right side of the cane. It's easy to find because it's the shiny side. And it's going to insert it up between the inside rim and the basket. Put it up there about five inches, four or five inches, and give it a bend down and go back down on the outside rim and basket. Pull it down there. You should have about four inches sticking out on the other side of the basket. I have a piece of kind of tattered there. We'll just clip that off. Come on in here. Now I'm on the outside of the basket and I'm going to bring this around and insert it back to the inside. I'm going to repeat this step one more time. Again, opening this area up here, coming in, pulling that piece, that end of it up, and take it down. Use your screwdriver if you have to open up that area somewhat. When I bring this across here, I am going to have my right side out. And I'm going to get it started before I put my seagrass in there because it's just a lot easier to handle all this. Open this area up here. Insert it between your rim and your, ba and your weaving here. And give this, I'm going to pull this one around because I want to show you a little bit here that needs to, um, that we need to do with the handle of the basket. I'm going to bring in my seagrass and, and tuck it under here, butt it right up next to the handle. And pull this one tight. Then I'm going to bring this across. On this basket, I double X the handle. It just kind of helps it stay in tighter, keeps everything together. Make sure you come across your handle on the outside. Pull this through. Then we're going to double back and make an X on the outside of the handle. And again, I have to straighten this all up here. As I continue on the other way, now I need to stop and insert another piece of seagrass over here. I may have to come back and loosen this up a little bit. Tighten this back down and continue on and lash this basket around. Don't forget to double X your handle over here. Then I'll show you what I did on the, as we finish up this pattern. You can see I've double lashed, which means I've, when I've got, when I went around and was at the point where I started, I turned around and went back again. And I double X this. This handle has two X's on it. And that, again, it was just to hold everything together and for the beauty of it. As I come around here, I'm finishing up the basket now. I have to go in here one more time. I'm making my X's on top of the basket up here. Now, using your screwdriver, this is going to be a real tight fit in here. But use your screwdriver and open up this area. Remember, we're going to end it the very same way we started it. Come up under here, under your seagrass, put that end through the seagrass, open this up, and insert it down in here. Put it, oops, I'm underneath, let's see. Well, I keep catching it under here. Let's, we need to bring this, there we go, to the outside. Take this piece, go back into the middle and do that one more time. Sneak it up under that seagrass to end the piece. Then you can pull your tail down and cut it off. The basket that we'll be working on next time is called a gathering basket. Wonderful for the garden. It's just a really fun basket. Some twining on it, but we'll get through that. Has a cute little decorative top here. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week.